We continue our midweek series with the past, present, future. I don't know, what do you think? And I'm gonna call an audible here. As I was wrestling with the present, I'm gonna need to break that into two weeks, kind of two halves, because there's just too many pieces, I think, that are important there, and I can't condense that down, as these are generally shorter messages, these midweek services. So we're gonna focus on one part this week and another half next week. So with that, let's pray. Gracious God, bless the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, that they are pleasing to you and faithful to your gospel. These things I pray in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Now what I invite you to do is hit the pause button. Grab a Bible or pull out your phone. Read Acts chapter 9, verses 1 to 25. It's the story of Saul's conversion. But before we get to that, As we talk about the present and we look at the life of Jesus, the life of Jesus forces the people to focus on the present and focusing on the present and what God is doing at that time and what God is calling the people to. And if we look at the basic whole of Jesus' ministry, we see that in the present, the people are being called to love God and to love one another. They're being called to welcome all people, Jew, Gentile, slave, free, whoever it is, to gather all people together, to welcome all people, to see them as valued and valid. He's calling them, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't be anxious about it. What you're to wear, what you're to eat. God has you covered in those pieces and God will provide. Forgive your debtors, the ones that have harmed you along the way, pushing it even to the point of uh, pray for your enemies and love, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Don't focus on the past, but focus on the here and now and the relationships that need to be restored. In other words, it's kind of like that old saying, don't be so heavenly bound that you're no earthly good. Jesus calls the people to the here and now, time and place on earth and how God is working and invites them into that moment in time. And so we look at the story of Paul, Saul, later to become Paul. Last week, we focused on the past and Saul's identity connected to him being part of the covenant people going all the way back to Abram. We also pointed out some of the things that Paul did that were pretty atrocious. And that's where we get to our story for today and the half of the present message that I want to share today. Our past comes with us into the present. We bring the good, the bad, and the ugly. (laughs) Uh, All of it comes with us into the present. And so we have to acknowledge that. And so in the story in chapter 9, Saul is on the road to Damascus. He is still breathing words of murder against Uh, the disciples of Jesus and threats that he's putting out there. He's gone to the leadership in Rome and said, give me the authority to come and round up these people of the way. That's what they were called. The followers of Christ were called the people of the way. Let me grab grab them and bound them up, put them into the prisons. And so he was given that authority to do that. And so on the road to Damascus, this light comes down and it blinds Saul, knocks him off to the ground and the voice comes out, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Saul looks and says, who are you? He says, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. Get up now, go to the city, and I will tell you what to do. I will tell you what to do. The people with Saul were terrified. They got him up, they moved him, and Saul was blind. And for three days, he prayed and he ate nothing. And then the story goes on that the Lord comes to a disciple, Ananias, and says, I want you to go and lay hands on Paul and bring healing because he's seen in a vision a man named Ananias is coming and will lay hands on him. Ananias says, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't don't want to do that because I've heard all kinds of things about this guy, the evil that he's done to people who follow you. And he has the authority in this place where I am Um, to bound me up and others who call on your name. Send us to prison to have our lives taken. But Jesus speaks and says, no, it's okay. He's going to be an instrument of mine, and he's going to learn what it means to suffer greatly for my name's sake. 
So Ananias goes and he lays on hands. Saul's eyes are open, the scales fall down. He sees anew and yet his past has come with him. His past has come with him because just like Ananias, the other disciples when they hear about it are like, whoa, whoa, they didn't trust him. I mean, he had had their friends beaten. He had had their friends killed. He'd had their friends in, put in prison. They didn't believe it. They were leery. And yet in time, as they begin to watch Saul, some of them begin to trust. So much so that as they heard him proclaim Jesus, the Jews came after Saul because he was doing this. And it was those disciples that helped Saul escape to safety. But then when he got into Jerusalem and was proclaiming Christ, the disciples there were like, Ugh! until Barnabas comes and says, look, he's legit. He's proclaiming the name of Christ. You can trust him. Our past comes with us, no matter whether we want it to or not. And Paul's past was pretty atrocious. So there is a time and place where we can understand fully the leeriness and the worrisome hearts of the disciples who were there for what Saul had done. So when we talk about our past, we all have a past. And the thing is, in Saul's case, he thought he was being faithful. He was following the law as laid out in the Torah, um, the traditions of the, the people of Israel. You know, he's one of part, part of that religious leaders in the community that is helping people understand, as I said last week, the scriptures, the traditions. He thought he was doing the right thing by holding people to the law, to the law that God had laid down through Moses to the people. He thought he was helping them in that. Many of us probably have had times, especially when we think of our faith, when we feel like we've been doing the right thing and are faithful to God, only to find out somewhere down the road later, we probably were either following our own desires, misunderstood what we were called to do, or realized that with the, taint, the changing of time and the new work that God is doing in the world, God is calling us to something different. Saul is at that place where God is calling him in the present to something different, something new, to what we said, to proclaim love for God and love of neighbor, to remind people that all are welcome and gathered into Christ's arms of mercy, that they're not to worry about today, tomorrow, and anxious about the future, God will take care, care of that. That they're to forgive their debtors. What I've already said, it, it goes on. But the fact is, what Paul did, did damage. And it's going to take time for healing to happen. It's important that we take responsibility for actions of our past that affect the present. We can't just look and say, well, that's not who I am anymore, and that was a long time ago. It may be a lot, seem like a long time ago for us, but as you've learned over the years, I'm sure when you've been wounded and hurt in some form, that doesn't just go away easily. It's like saying to someone who's lost a spouse, well, it's been a year, it's been five years, you shouldn't be sad. No, that stuff, that hurt carries with us. And so Saul brings with him a past that did damage and that is going to need to be reconciled within the community. So on the one hand, we look at Saul, he thought he was doing the right thing, but he, he wasn't for the here and now doing what God was wanting him to do. And then we look at the other side, Ananias and the disciples, the courage and the strength and trust that it took to be able to come forward and in spite of that past, still welcome Saul in as a fellow brother in the way, as disciples of Christ proclaiming Christ's love to the world. So we, I don't wanna condemn Paul to the point of no return because that's not what's happening here. There's a point of transformation that is to come, which will be the focus next week. But we have to acknowledge a past that comes in the present and affects it. God is calling us, how do we deal with the here and now? And so again, for the side that's been hurt, the strength and the courage that it took for them to come up, to be willing to give some time of trust is truly incredible. 
I remember going to, and I think I shared this recently somewhere, I remember going to my professor in seminary as I was in class, and I realized in a moment as something we were studying that, wow, I, I used to think kind of the opposite of that in the past, but now I look and see, wow, I was off back then. And so I went up to her and I remember saying, saying, Gwen, hey, so was I wrong? And she looked at me and she said, it's not about right and wrong. It's about this journey of faith that you've been on and God, through God's spirit, is still working on you. Now, Paul, we can probably say, having people killed, stoned, he was dead wrong. But God is still working on Saul and by the spirit seeking to transform him to the here and now, in the present of his life, that he might be a blessing, not only to those that he hurt, but to that community that's never heard of this God of love and mercy. So there's the first half of the present. God is focusing us, and Saul, <laughs> on the here and now, but that past comes with us, and we who bring it with can't dismiss it quickly. We need to listen and be thoughtful and open, especially to those whom it has harmed. And we can't say, oh, that's so long ago. But we need to give them the space and the time to feel safe enough at some point. And that shouldn't be on them. That should be on Saul in this case. So there's the first part as we look at the present. Our past comes with us. We need to give time for healing to take place. And it's not the responsibility of the victims to come and have to be the ones to have the courage to make that change.